The purpose of this research is to gain an understanding of algorithmic stablecoin, their role, their history, and their potential in the overall ecosystem. Algo stablecoin is a type of stablecoin that uses algorithms to change its circulating supply so as to get a stable value of the asset. The research spans across several projects that differ from each other in terms of mechanism and stabilization algorithms, and we will discuss the stability mechanism proposed by the protocol and compare them solutions. It all happened based on algorithms, which are mathematical models with adjustable parameters executed by smart contracts. Some of these parameters can be adjusted through governance or also other mechanisms. But in general, an algorithmic stablecoin creates more token, so increasing its supply, when price goes above the peg value, say $1, and reduce its supply when price fell below the peg value. There are mainly two types of mechanisms. The single token model, which operates with a simple rebase mechanism where tokens are printed and issued by the protocol when the price of the token is above a certain threshold. When the total supply changes, it directly affects the quantity of the tokens that the token holders have. The quantity can increase or decrease in proportion to the rebase. The second model is the multiple token model, which has basically other tokens as part of the stability mechanism. The additional tokens can be used in many forms. And rebase still has three cases. When token price goes above one dollar, it creates more token. When token goes below one dollar, it creates debt in form of bonds. And when the token remains stable, say pegged to one dollar, not more tokens are minted. The project that chose those models can have usually up to three tokens involved in their mechanism: the native stablecoin shares tokens, so they're mint as a value accrual tool for shareholders, and bond or coupons tokens, which basically represent a sort of debt in the protocol. We had two primary requirements for choosing protocols to analyze. Firstly, they had to be live on mainnet and actively interacting with the market. Secondly, they had to have an algorithmic pegging mechanism based on incentives with no collateralization, and the protocols that fit this description were TerraMoney, Frax, Reserve, Ampleforth, Empty Set Dollar, and its derivative Dynamic Set Dollar, the Basonomics, and Basis Cash. So, we want to analyze and evaluate across all these different protocols. Now, when we evaluate across protocols, we need something as a baseline to compare across. We are also not just comparing quantitative data, but we also want to compare across the qualitative mechanisms in these protocols. So we have eight different protocols, and the way we are comparing and analyzing them is to use the economics design framework. This economics design framework is the economics that goes into a token-based ecosystem. It looks at three different pillars, market design, mechanism design, and token design. Market design is the design of the digital environment that people will trade and transact in. Mechanism design is the rules that is in this entire ecosystem. Token design is the design of the token, the main incentive to allow people to trade. So for instance, in stable coins, token design is not just understanding and analyzing the token itself, the stable coin, but also any other secondary token that comes in the entire ecosystem. Across all these different matrix, we look at qualitative and quantitative matrix. The four main matrix that I want to pick up are market adoption. So in token adoption, which is analyzed in the market design, we're looking at things like how often it's being exchanged, how much is in wallet, how much is circulating. These are some things that we want to analyze. In governance, which is under mechanism design, we look at the improvement proposals. What are they? How are they voted? How do they get validated? And when we look at the mechanism and token design together, we want to analyze the accuracy of PEG of these tokens. So are they, did they meet the target of $1? Or are they trading at 51 cents? Or are they trading at $1.30? What is the accuracy of that? And what is the range that we are comfortable with? So it could be $1 plus minus 5% or plus minus 1%. So that's something that we analyzed. The other thing is also death loops. Death loops are these things where it's a negative spiral. When prices of the stablecoin goes down because of the algorithm, because of the way the mechanism is structured, 
it should push the prices up. But because of the lack of faith or lack of market design, lack of demand of the users, it actually spirals down. So this is something we want to calculate and we want to quantify. And lastly, we look at incentives, which are the secondary tokens in place. How do they affect the token prices and are they good or bad for the system and how do they work? So all in all, we combine them and we compare them across both qualitative and quantitative data. So if you look at the quantitative data for market design, we have different kinds of stuff like the total supply and exchanges, the percentage of addresses being used, how decentralized it is, and we look at all these different kinds of analysis. Example of quantitative data in token design, we look at the peg, the stability of it, we calculate them in percentages and we compare them across all different protocols. So quantitative data is of course a lot easier because these are numbers that you can just compare. 10 is good or 10 is bad. You can just make the definitions and compare across them. The tricky parts will be the qualitative data because that's a lot harder to quantify and you have to really know the mechanism. So that's what we did and that's what we used to quantify and qualify and compare across all of these protocols. In the discussion section, we tried to identify which parts of the different designs influence the final results the most. We identify three main risk categories, starting from economic exploits, going to the price volatility, and in the end, the technical risks. Economic exploits arise whenever there are power imbalances between agents in the protocol. This way, agents with more power are incentivized to make economic gains at the expense of other participants in the protocol. As an example, we could cite the coupon mechanism used by many protocols when they had to enact a contractionary monetary policy. The risk attached to those coupons was too high and didn't incentivize many people to burn their uh, money supply in order to gain those coupons. Price volatility arises whenever there are imbalances between the supply and the demand of the asset. It is the main risk with which every protocol has to cope as the stablecoin has to maintain a fixed peg. Technical risks are all those risks linked to the functioning of the protocol from a technical standpoint. They go from smart contracts being hacked to oracle failures. We also looked at way in which this risk could be mitigated. As an example, on-chain smart contract insurance protocols. The discussion and analysis of the data led us to the conclusion and recommendation regarding protocol and incentives. The recommendation are divided like the discussion on three categories discussed earlier. The first category on which we can make some recommendation is economic exploitation. Stablecoin ecosystems are not blessed with the ability to attract users through the possible increase in price of the token. Therefore, it is really important to focus on defining the right components to create a strong community around the project. We must also try to define the fundamental components of the protocols in order to better manage the dynamic price response or possible black swans. Another fundamental point on which we can make a recommendation is price volatility. Manipulating the supply of the protocol is undoubtedly the easiest choice but often does not work properly. A possible alternative is to get new partnership or integration that drives demand of their own to the utility of the currency. In addition to focusing on token monetary policy, token demand management is crucial. Increasing demand reduces the risk of token uselessness and can certainly be incentivized through partnership, acceptance of stable tokens as collateral in other protocols or increase community acceptance of the token use. Finally, it is worth noting that technical risk is always present, even in ecosystems that have existed for longer. In particular, the difficult management of oracles and the elimination of single point of failure still exist. This can be eliminated by using Chainlink or by trying to establish a variety of token pairs that deviate just from Ethereum. Lots of people are not keen on adopting ICO stable coins, but we are. And this is why we worked on this report. With Algo stable coins, we can experiment these designs and study their empirical evidence and their efficiencies. One day, not too far from here, we can build better monetary models, we believe. According to our research, based on the current public plans of March, April 2021, FRAX comes out as the best protocol with the highest overall score. Our findings say clearly, 
Purely algorithmic stablecoin have failed to deliver the bare minimum solidity and efficiency needed to attract meaningful adoption. Frax, with its hybrid approach, has been able to maintain a solid peg, devising a clever and effective system to stabilize the protocol, and has provided a compelling arbitrage opportunity for their participants. These have all been shown by our metrics and the results are indeed stronger adoption compared to its peers. Algo stablecoin is still a new mechanism that is being explored right now. We have experimented with coupon-based mechanisms that don't seem to work in all the needs back. Pure Algo stablecoin we're rebasing might have some potential, but as for today, it seems like the best bet so far is still a fractional collateralization with an algo mechanism to maintain the peg.